Welcome back, everyone. Uh, we are back to another reactor tutorial. This time we are going to look at the voltage control filter. So first thing we're going to do is look at the Berenger manual diagram and then look at the voltage control filter specifically and try to replicate it in reactor six. As a quick note, uh, you guys can still download my uh, synth from the Native Instruments user library. It's still available. It's now on version 0 0.2. Um, I have added the oscillator sync option into the synth itself. And you guys can have fun with it if you want. Uh, also, if you guys want to follow my uh, pages and all social media, etc., just um, go to the description and underneath you guys can um, access my personal website and from there, uh, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Also, don't forget that I have timestamps available so you guys can jump whatever you want in the video. Uh, if you're looking for some specific information. Okay, uh, let's have a look again at the neutron normalized routing. Um, at the moment, we've done this bit. However, the noise and external inputs are not yet available. They will be at a later stage. But so far, we got the oscillators done with the oscillator mix, and now we are looking into the VCF. This is just to inform where we're standing at the moment in case uh, someone missed my other previous videos about the Berenger neutron. So this is what we're going to discuss today. And I suggest going back to see what has been done. Okay, so here's the voltage control filter section. Um, we can start with the frequency control, which is just the cutoff frequency, pretty simple. Then we have the modes, we've got three modes, so high pass, uh, band pass and low pass filter. Uh, you can select it uh, by pressing the mode button, so as we spoke before, um, we're going to need the toggle button for this. The six step sequencer and the lamps uh, with the compare equal modules to um, build this. Then we've got the resonance. Um, resonance adjusts the resonance of the filter as well. It's pretty simple. Um, there's nothing much about this. Then we have the key track. And the key track is quite tricky, but it's very simple to do. But it took me a bit to get into it, but it's very simple. Then finally, the modulation depth and the envelope depth. Uh, both of them, we're going to need to build the LFO and the envelope generators before we can do anything with this. So we're going to focus on the first uh, two knobs, the frequency and resonance, as well the kit track and the mode. OK, now we're inside Reactor. Um, just go to your synth section and uh, create a macro called voltage controlled filter. This is where we're going to add all the built-in modules in order to build the voltage control filter. Once the macro is built, don't forget to adjust your macro in the panel view. Um, otherwise, you'll start having all the knobs and buttons on top of the oscillators and you want to avoid that. And as well, drag and drop the outs to the VCF, so you can create the in and out. This can be done by drag and dropping and holding the command button in your keyboard. Right, now that we've got sorted, we can look at the different um, filters we've got available. And we are going to choose the multi two pole filter. Right, now that we got the two-pole filter, let's get the information. So it's a second order 12 dB per octave resonant multimode filter with low pass, band pass and high pass outputs. This completely matches the um, description on the Berenger manual. And we're going to start by connecting the input of the voltage control filter into the filter. Then we're going to create a control for the pitch. 
called frequency. Once this is sorted, what we want to do is go to the function of the frequency knob, not the view, um, and then change the minimum value from 20 to 0. I know the minimum it says is 20, but you can go deeper than that. Um, here I'm just building a switch to test uh, if everything is correctly plugged in. So uh, it allows me to have a look at all the filter types. So you can test the high pass filter, the band pass filter and the low pass filter individually. Once finishing labeling the switch, all you have to do is connect it to the output and give it a test. There you go, I can see a waveform. Let's just uh, clear the panel view. Okay, everything seems fine with the filter, it's working perfectly. Let's build the resonance control and we are going to call it res. Once the resonance build is done, it's time to test it. Um, let's just remove the scope uh, from the oscillators and add it to the voltage control filter so we can see the filter in action. Moving forward, we are now going to build the mode button so we can select uh, which filter type we want to play. Um, it's similar to what has been done before uh, in the range of the oscillators. And if you want to know more about this, I suggest you go back to the oscillators video because I've already explained it there. Okay, looking further in the Behringer Neutron Manual, uh, you can see that the Reser control adjusts the resonance of the filter. When the resonance control is set to at or close to, maximum the VCF will become self-resonant and produce a sine wave tuned to the cutoff frequency of the filter. This means that we have to change the value of our resonance and try to make it uh, become a sine wave when it's at maximum. Fortunately, this can be done very easily because this, this filter we've chosen uh, allows us to do that. Uh, let's have a look how to do that now. In Reactor, uh, first thing you want to do is uh, click on the resonance and go to the function and change the maximum value to 1, default to 0 0.5 and leave the step size as it is. Once that is done, uh, just make sure the resonance is at maximum um, and then press the key to test it. As you can see, the waveform is clipping, so it's technically not a sine wave. It's a 
square wave and here what I'm doing is uh, reducing the amplitude of the waveform so now it should be a bit more clear and not clipping it's a bit better not yet as we want so let's do something which is get a compare equal module um, create a constant and that constant is going to be 1 we are going to compare with the values of the resonance so when the resonance is at maximum uh, and the values are equal we are going to reduce the amplitude of the waveform so here's just a test it's alright um, when I turn the knob to maximum it works fine let's create some space now so we can add our um, relay and the relay will decide what to go through when the resonance is at 1 or uh, below 1. Here I'm multiplying the output of the filter uh, again uh, with 0 0.5 which was a mistake. Uh, realistically we are looking for values under 0 0.5 so the amplitude of the waveform is lower. Connect everything accordingly and then let's do a quick test. Okay, now we're going to look at the key track and the key track uh, applies keyboard tracking to the voltage control filter. Very simple. Um, and was a bit tricky to do it, but that is fine. Let's have a look at how we can do this in Reactor. Okay, first thing I want to do very quickly is just uh, position the mod depth and envelope depth knobs uh, in the panel. Uh, so we can finish the graphics user interface and move on to the key track. First thing we're going to do now is create uh, an addition. So we are going to add the value of the pitch input with the frequency for when the key track button is pressed. Um, we are going back to the synthesizer um, and create a pitch input on the voltage control filter macro and we're going to call it pitch in. Back into the voltage control filter we want to tidy up the things a little bit and create a button. This button, we're going to call it key track. And after, we are going to place it in the panel properly. Don't forget to change it for a toggle button so it keeps outputting once and now we are going back to the relay which is controlled by the key track button 
we're going to sum the pitch input with the frequency knob and that is going to go to the one input of the relay. So when the key track is pressed, pitch in and the frequency knob are going to take control. When the key track is not pressed, the frequency knob takes over. Uh, now that we've built everything, let's tidy up again and give it a quick test. Back to the Behringer Neutron Manual, uh, the last thing we're going to talk about is the VCF2. The VCF2 is basically another output from the VCF1, um, but um, the VCF2 mode is determined by the select VCF mode. Um, the relationship is the mode in VCF1 will be one step ahead in VCF2, let's say. You can see here in the picture. Uh, this allows for additional filter modes, like they say, for example, a notch filter can be created using this by summing both uh, filters, then patching the summed output into, for instance, overdrive in. Um, this is pretty simple to achieve, this is nothing major, and we can have a look now, it's done in Reactor. So, just uh, duplicate your uh, tuple filter and selector leave the connections as they are. Um, the resonance, I decided to subtract 0.02 from the resonance, so the resonance does not self-oscillate and creates another unwanted sine wave. So filter 2 will not have the possibility of generating a sine wave. Okay, once that's done, tidy up again and start connecting the bandpass filter into the zero position, low pass filter to the first position and the high pass filter into the second position. Then we are going to create an output called VCF2 output and this will be then later connected to the matrix. Okay, that's it for today. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you did, please subscribe as usual. Um, I will be back tomorrow with another video uh, about the low frequency oscillator. Stay tuned and thanks for watching.